Hi, I'm Kieran Pryor, and I've been connected with debt for all of my life. The photograph you see is of an amazing young lad taking a short time before he set off on a hunting and fishing trip out on Loch Ree. For a young lad with a deep and caring love for nature and the outdoor life, well, the excitement that it mounted as the big day drew close. He was being taken out by his uncle Liam, himself a keen fisherman, a kind man, with a special fondness for his young nephew. And so the long-awaited day finally arrived and they set out across the open water hunting and fishing. And the young lad soaked up the stories and wisdom being passed on to him by his uncle. Like all good things, this day too finally drew to a close and as they headed back towards their landing berth underneath the old bridge in Lanesboro, they started to gather their equipment in preparation for coming ashore. The young lad started passing out each item one by one to his uncle who had stepped up onto the bank. Fishing rods, bait box, picnic hamper. As he bent down to pick up the last item, suddenly the silence was shattered by a ferocious bang. The smell of gunpowder filled the air. The young boy cried out as his shoulder and upper arm took the force of the discharge. He had bent down to pick up the shotgun and the trigger caught in a footwell hook. And you can imagine the scene that ensued as Medical assistance was sought from the local doctor and he was rushed to hospital. His name was Kieran Murray. He was only 14 years old. He was my mother's big brother, and my uncle. He died from his injuries a short time later. It was the 24th of February 1952 and although I hadn't yet been born, my connection with death had already begun. Traditionally, the good room was that special room in Irish homes kept pristine for special occasions and special visitors that may arrive. It was kept clear at all times in the anticipation of one of those visits. And as I thought about it some more, it came to me that for the best part of 32 years of my working life, I had visited the good room of so many homes across the country. Except sadly, not always for a good reason. You see, I work as a Garda, an Irish police officer, and for the past 15 of those 32 years, I have been working as a crime scene examiner, a CSI. And for so many of those visits have been for trauma, tragedy, and death. But the funny thing about that is, if ever such a thing could be termed as funny, is that as a child, I was frightened of death. At school, we had a choir and we used to sing at Sunday Mass and if there was a death in the locality, we'd also provide the choir. And I can recall watching as the bereaved families left with the remains and just hoping that no eye contact would be made. I remember waking up at night with visions of coffins and death filling my mind and unable to get back to sleep. And I now know why these memories were so profound for me. At some stage around that time in my childhood, I found out that not only was I called after my uncle Kieran, who you've heard died so tragically and so young, but I was also called after my father's brother, Uncle Kieran, who died as a baby. 
So, in my child's mind, a question arose for me, and it was this. Did the name Kieran mean that I too was destined for an early death? But it was another tragic event that happened in 1980 that really convinced me that somehow I was connected to death on so many fronts. John Morley was one of the greatest players ever to play Gaelic football. Strong, athletic man. A work colleague of my father's and a friend. And I too had a special treat. I was dropped at the gates to the old Hyde Park football ground where John collected me at the gate and brought me across to the elevated commentary position where Michal O'Hare was doing a live broadcast on the big match. Michal O'Hare being a legendary sports commentator with RTE and this was a special treat for me to be allowed to watch this match from the elevated position. And as we walked along the crowd I felt a warm glow just being in the presence of this strong athletic hero who seemed to know everybody in the crowd and everybody seemed to have a word with him. We climbed up to the position and John introduced me to Michal and with a stern warning from both men to stay quiet once the live broadcast began. The thrill of the match, the bird's eye view, the roar of the crowd, but most especially the kindness of John are memories that are vivid and clear in my mind to this day. A short time later on the 7th of July 1980, I was cycling my bike home on a warm summer's day and I could see my father's car approach in the distance. He was traveling at speed and this was an unusual occurrence for my dad. He was normally such a steady and careful driver. He pulled in quickly beside me and let down the window and shouted out, John Morley's just been shot dead. In the aftermath of a bank robbery with his colleague, Henry Byrne. I stood there, motionless, unable to move as my dad sped off to join the investigation. A policeman too, like John Morley. I can remember being down in John's house, accompanying my father in the days following the funeral and the air of grief and sadness that prevailed as I played with his son, Shane. So in my child's mind, Death was close at hand. It was inevitable. And it was somehow strangely linked to me. Well, time passed and this childhood fear as it eased as I entered my teenage years. And in 1990, I too joined the Garda, the Irish police force. I spent nine years working in Dublin. And during that time, I visited so many scenes of death and the fear and terror that I had as a child was now replaced by a sad acceptance of the sudden and violent way that life could be taken. It had now become part of my own working life. On the 12th of January 1999, I transferred to Castlery Garda Station in County Roscommon. And as I paused outside the station to reflect on the memorial plaque erected to John and Henry, who had been murdered while stationed at Castlery Station, I was joined by a colleague who was also transferring down from Dublin. As we exchanged greetings, I was struck by the strength and integrity in the handshake and the pristine, clean-cut appearance of Garda Colum Horkin, who would also be lost in the line of duty, just a few short yards from where we stood. A 
As I look back, sometimes I ask, why Colm and not me? Well, eight years later, I joined the Crime Scene Investigation Unit, those guys you see in the white suits at serious incidents such as murder. And don't worry, I'm not going to frighten anyone here with tales of horror. The basis, of course, for a crime scene investigation is the principle of Locard's theory of every contact leaves a trace. And it's that underlying foundation that pins every investigation and indeed the whole basis of forensic science. And the other image now commonly associated with crime scene investigation and forensic science is the image of the DNA molecule, the double helix type structure with the two strands intertwined. And as I look at it now, I see that my connection with death resembles the structure with me as one strand and death as the other. If I thought that nine years in Dublin brought death to me, then my work as a crime scene investigator left that exposure firmly in the shade. These past 15 years have shown me death in all manner and means, sudden, suspicious, violent, and unexpected. And to bear witness and testimony to the passing of a fellow human being. And people ask, does this constant exposure to death bother you? And of course you wouldn't be human if it didn't affect you in some way. But the way we cope is by focusing on the deceased person and their loved ones. And to find the answer as to what happened to them. And from talking to bereaved people at these tragic scenes over the years, there's one takeaway that I can leave with you here today, and it's this. Please don't postpone that meeting or friendly chat with a friend, a sibling, a parent, or a loved one. So often I've heard the regrets. I only saw him earlier but I didn't stop to talk. Stop. Talk. Take the time. Because you and I, we just don't know. I believe that every single death I've encountered has left a trace with my being and existence. But out of all the categories of death that I've come on, the one that touches me deep inside is suicide. I'm going to present you with some shocking figures. Since the 1st of January this year, 116 road traffic deaths have taken place. And in the same period, so many, many more deaths have occurred through suicide. It's that hidden story of grief and trauma that swept across our country, but there's barely a word about it. In comparison to the publicity and exposure about road deaths, suicide is that silent secret that's never discussed. Three and a half thousand people lost their lives through violence in the Troubles in Northern Ireland. By way of comparison, in an eight-year snapshot, 4,878 people lost their lives to suicide in the period from 2011 to 2019. To stand at such a scene and hold a parent's beloved son or daughter in your arms is a truly touching, upsetting and moving thing. It's the loss of that potentially great life unlived and the knowledge of the devastation that's about to descend on the family concerned. This strange connection with death that has linked to me from before I was even born has poked me into action with these lessons I have learned along the way. 
So I'm asking you here, now, today, to act, project outwards, a friendly smile, a kind gesture, or a good deed. If it helps even one person divert from a dark place, well then this will have been worthwhile. This talk here today is my last act as a policeman. At midnight tonight, I'm stepping away from this job that has brought me so much good in my life, but has also exposed me to so many sights that no eyes should have to see. I'm setting off on a new journey now, as taught to me by that old adversary of mine, debt. It's a journey that will focus on the joys of life, which contrasts to what I have dealt with over these 32 years. I know I can't escape this debt. I know it's coming for me. But for now, I'm glad to be standing here sharing with you. So please never, ever underestimate the power of that friendly smile, that kind gesture, or that good deed. Because a TED room, well, it's the ultimate good room. And it's been my great honor here today to have at long last, for a good reason, visited this TEDx Tralee room, the good room. Thank you very much.